Congregation, please find Colossians chapter 3. Hennon, thank you so much for your words of testimony. Anako and Christy and others, thank you so much for all the help today in the worship service, people serving the Lord's Supper, Sam and Francois and others getting here super, super early to set up all of the sound equipment, those that were participating in the Christian leadership time with Paul Madsen, what a great discussion. Colossians chapter 3. What would it take for you, for the next ten minutes, for you to be able to focus on Jesus? For the next ten minutes, what would it take for you personally, not someone else, not someone someplace else, but for yourself personally, what would it take to be able to focus on Jesus? In Colossians chapter 3, we're going section by section. And last week, we talked about putting on or putting our minds on things that are above. And today, there's a bit of a strange picture, isn't it? It's, it's men that are in the mud. No matter what they might be, no matter who they might be, no matter where they could be going at this exact moment, They're in the mud. And the next picture is uh, something that's uh, quite useful in in the world. A wasp is a very, very useful thing. It's a very useful insect. It kills other insects. And in fact, if you're a farmer, you like to have a wasp around. But if you're a child, and you don't know the difference between a wasp and a bee, a bee brings you this nice thing called honey. And so with a bee, you've got to be a little bit careful. But with a wasp, it it doesn't bring you anything nice that you can see. And if you make a mistake as a child, if you play around with a wasp or a wasp nest, you're going to get stung. And as we look at Colossians chapter 3, there are some amazing Amazing promises for us in Colossians chapter 3. But there are also some reminders, reminders that while there are things in this world that are helpful to us, there are also things that are not helpful in Colossians chapter 3. Today, looking at verses 5 through 7, Paul says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them. And as we go through Colossians, there are these beautiful pictures. And there are some beautiful contrasts. If you would look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. There is a beautiful picture about who Christ is. And as we look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, we can see that Christ is the firstborn of all creation. And that message is reinforced in other places in the Bible. And today, as you set your mind on things that are above, remember to set your mind on Christ He is the firstborn of all creation. And as we continue in chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, we could see that Christ was the firstborn from the dead. Because of Adam, sin entered the life. And because of sin, all of us were destined to die. So just as Christ was the firstborn of all creation, He also became the firstborn of the dead. And as we continue in chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, we could see who we were. There was a time that we were alienated, that we were far away from God, that we were far away from His purposes. That doesn't mean that we were living terrible lives. There are people who will spend their life in church, but will spend eternity in hell because they were alienated from God. 
And once we were alienated from God, it says in those verses. But then it also says that we were forgiven because Christ is the firstborn from the dead, because He does offer salvation. And because of Christ, you and I can be declared holy and blameless. Not because of anything that we've done. Not because of anything that we've earned. But because of Christ, these things are true. And then if we look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, the Bible says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. We once were alienated, but now it's possible that we can be walking in Him. And yes, last week we talked about this. Horoscopes can be fun. Numerology can be interesting. The latest version of angelology can be turned into the Da Vinci Code and can sell millions and billions of movies and generate. There's all kinds of things in this world that are fun. There's all kinds of philosophies in this world that seem that they have an appearance of being reasonable. But we're reminded in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, to see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. And ultimately, there's this plea, don't be disqualified. Don't take yourself out of God's perfect plan for your life. Walk in Him. Set your mind on Him. Pursue Him. Don't be disqualified. In chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, there are all of these interesting philosophies, and they they look good. This is the thing about man-made religion. It's always going to look good. The latest techniques are going to look good. They're going to sound good. They're going to have the appearance of being right. They look good, but they're the same as all man-made religions are. They're useless. So, as we continue today to Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 and 7, set your minds on things that are above and put to death What is earthly? These beautiful pictures that we have. Picture of Christ being the firstborn of creation. Picture of Christ being the firstborn of the dead. Picture that Christ says for you and I, we can walk. We can be declared pure. We can be declared holy because of Him. We can set our minds on things above. As we continue through Colossians chapter 3, we can see things that we are supposed to put on. But there's this reminder that there are some things that we just need to put to death. We need to put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Have you ever done this? Have you ever picked up a match and you lit the match And you guys so focused, oh, isn't that a beautiful flame? You you hold on to that match long enough, you know what's going to happen to you. You're going to get burned. Not just metaphorically. Literally. And Paul goes through some things here that even though... We have all of these amazing opportunities to set our mind on things that are above. We still can allow ourselves to get in the mud. We still can play with things. We still can just take little taste of things. Because after all, how bad could it be? And Paul reminds us that sexual immorality needs to be put to death. 
Homosexuality is a sin. Sex with animals is a sin. Sex with someone who is not your wife, who is not your husband, is a sin. Sex is a wonderful blessing from God, but the Bible makes it clear. It is to be between a man and a woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Put to death all of this other sexual immorality. No matter how popular it might seem, and no matter how much people might say, oh, you're just following old traditions, you're not very modern, you're not very up to date. How much pain and misery exists in our world today? If you are here today and you are cheating on your spouse, stop it! Not only are you hurting yourself, you're hurting the church. Not only are you hurting yourself, you're hurting your children. Not only are you hurting your family, you're hurting someone else's family. You don't play around with it, you put it to death. And if people say, well, you're just not very modern, you're just not very tolerant, you're just not very enlightened, the Bible says it. Put it to death. The wrath of God is coming. Impurity. We might not commit adultery physically with someone else, but there could be areas of our life that they're impure. Just cheating a little bit here. Just taking a little bit there. Just cutting corners a little bit here. Put it to death. The wrath of God is coming. Passion. (laughs) This one linguistically. This one linguistically. Oh, this is such a heavy thing, folks. You've got to let me smile and laugh a little bit, okay? I am from America. I know that it's in incredibly popular in my country the past 20 years. If you want to be a great leader, you've got to be passionate. And there's other cultures of the world that have read their Bible, and then they see a pastor standing up in front of them saying, the most important thing is to be passionate. And they're saying, huh? So on this word, passionate, however it's translated in your home country, It's not talking about being enthusiastic. It's not talking about being forward thinking. It's not talking about being appropriately in love and dedicated. It's talking about lust. It's talking about inappropriate actions. And so, okay, maybe the person says, I didn't commit adultery just outright physically. Maybe I just did a few little things here, okay? But my mind, my mind is still something that needs to be cleared. And then Paul says, evil desire. We need to do away with these things. We need to put them to death. They're not helping. And then there's the interesting word, covetousness. A desire to have what somebody else has. There's all kinds of studies now about why why Facebook is making us miserable. We're addicted to Facebook, and when we go and look at Facebook, everybody else in the world is having a better life than I'm having. Um, We have beautiful... Just like you, we have eight beautiful little grandchildren. They're just as precious. They're just as beautiful as they can be. I don't know exactly what age it is, but a child is just as happy as they can be playing with their own toy until they look over and see somebody else's toy. These precious little grandchildren of ours, I was just as happy as I could be, but now I see what you've got. Hey, I want that. You don't even like that. That doesn't matter. I want it. 
These are forms of idolatry. And they can be so subtle. He's got a better phone than I have. She's got a better car. He's got a better life. She's got more respect. Somebody else has something that's so much better. All I want is what they've got. I just want something else. Covetousness. We have this beautiful opportunity to walk and for our Savior to look at us, and not because of us, but because of Him, say, you're purely, you're, you're, you're pure, you're holy, you're blameless. Walk in a manner worthy of what I've called you to walk. We have the ability to put our minds on things that are above. But there's also these reminders that there are some things that we need to put to death. Don't go there. Even if everybody else is going there, don't go there. Don't go there in your physical actions. Don't go there in your mental desires. Don't go there in your covetous comparisons to other people. Put these things to death. Playing in the mud might have some benefit. But it's not the life that God wants us to live. Let's pray.